Hey, what's going on, people? It's SGZ here from the Spartan Game Zone, and in this video, we'll be counting down the top 10 legendary weapons for Moe's the Gunner. Yes, it's back. The series has returned, and each Vault Hunter has more guns to play with now than ever. Each one of these weapons are especially well suited to Moe's, dealing incredible damage across her most powerful builds. I'll be telling you what each gun does, where you can get it the quickest, and how you can get them dealing the most damage in her hands. If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate it if you could drop a like, and if you don't want to miss out on the Vault Hunter we'll be covering next week, then you can always subscribe. Don't forget to let me know in the comments what weapons you enjoy using the most on modes, and let's crack into it. We open this updated countdown of the top 10 legendary weapons for Moe's the Gunner with the Soul Render, a dial assault rifle exclusive to Guns, Love and Tentacles, which can come in all of the elements and can only be dropped from either Tom or Zam, who you fight around here in Heart's Desire. The Soul Render makes its way to Moe's through its unique effect, which summons explosive skulls alongside its bullets that will hunt down your enemies. On modes when specced into the splash, those skulls will hit extremely hard, destroying whatever's left of your enemy's health bars, and because they home in, you'll hardly need to aim. Not many assault rifles give modes that room to tap into, but the Soul Render does, and it certainly doesn't disappoint. Next up, the Boogeyman, an elemental Vlados sniper rifle that's exclusive to Arms Race, with an increased chance to drop from this chest. It's a common fact that Boogie Knights are always the best in town, and that's no truer than when you're running Moe's with the Boogeyman in your hands. With it equipped, there's no doubt that you'll be staying alive as you blast your way through countless enemies with explosive laser beams. It synergizes extremely well with Moe's due to it always dealing splash damage, and its unique effect of rarely consuming ammo pretty much guarantees you'll never have to reload, even when equipping the more powerful Times 2 variant. It also has a small chance on kill to spawn a ghost that'll seek out nearby enemies and scare some of their health away, raising the temperature of their Saturday night fever. Whether mobbing or bossing, it's just a fantastic weapon for Moe's. Up next, it's not a sheep, it's a cow sun, an SMG designed by Dahl, which can come in all the elements, and drops the quickest from Captain Trond at the end of Thanos, but only if you're on Mayhem 6 or higher. The cow sun is the cold milk in your cereal, you can always rely on it to enhance your experience. It fires sticky bombs at a nice pace that explodes shortly after impact. It's not the most accurate weapon since it's nerfed a long time ago, but you shouldn't see that as a problem as long as you aim down sights. For maximum damage you should look for a times 2 variant, but I find the standard one pairs great with an infernal wish. It's a great gun that constantly deals damage even when you have to reload, and that damage is always great. Up next is the Sandhawk, which can only come elemental and has an increased chance to drop from Katagawa Jr. who you fight around here in Atlas HQ, but like all Mayhem 6 weapons, it can also drop from the Guardian takedown bosses. The Sandhawk has always been a heavy duty weapon, it fires 7 projectiles at a rapid speed with a nice mag size, but consumes the 3 bullets per shot. That's a lot, but because we're modes, that doesn't mean anything. Specking into skills like the Iron Bank and Forge will help you to regen the ammo you expend, allowing you to take its damage everywhere. It'll drain the health bars of bosses almost instantly, especially if you run a Minesweeper com, and her ammo regen capabilities allow you to take that to the mobbing field too. Moving on to the Flipper, an elemental SMG that belongs to the Bounty of Blood, with an increased chance to drop from Minosaur around here in Blood Sun Canyon. The Flipper isn't your regular SMG, supporting a hidden trait that is quickly revealed as amazing, especially if you're Moat. Keeping your finger on the trigger will have it slowly add more bullets to the mix, culminating in a 9 course meal of Damson, that's a lot of damage. 
Rather than firing the one projectile like when you began, you'll be slinging nine of them down range that will shred the competition. Each one of those pallets will proc skills such as means of destruction, allowing you to fire forever while dishing out its peak damage. It really is a fantastic combo that can be enjoyed with ease on Moe's. Because you're firing all the time, a consecutive hits anointment really is a no-brainer and the flipper will have you constantly setting the field alight wherever that field may be. Coming up next is the Unkempt Herald, a torque pistol from Bounty of Blood that can come in all the elements and has an increased chance to drop from Cabadord. You fight around here in Blood Sun Canyon. The Unkempt Herald is a dirty damage dealer. It's a gun that'll go ahead and make your day with the raw explosiveness it provides. It epitomizes the term hand cannon. It's literally a cannon in your hands, firing a number of miniature rockets in a linear pattern that crash through health bars. It doesn't fire six shots or only five, but seven projectiles, and when they all converge, it'll hit like an ambulance. It comes in both times three and times four variants, consuming three or four ammo per shot, with the more the merrier, and if you're looking for something to blow away the competition, then look no further than this. Moving on now to the Backburner, a devastating launcher that can come in every single element and will drop the quickest from the Agonizer 9000. You fight at the end of the Guts of Carnivora, but only if you're on Mayhem 6 or above. The Backburner consumes 3 ammo per shot and fires glowing orbs that obliterate the field. Encased in each round are deadly nerf grenades that are rained down on impact, causing the majority of its damage. It's incredibly powerful with a high fire rate that you can continue making use of. With skills such as redistribution and means of destruction, its ammo count means nothing at all, allowing you to make full use of its power indefinitely. It's a gun that certainly shines brightest in Moses' hands, who's able to use it to drop bosses rapidly, no matter their size. Whatever way you look at it, you'll find it hard to wield a weapon deadlier than this. Time now for the Plasma Coil, a melee worn SMG that can only come in shock and radiation, which you can switch between. It's an exclusive arms race weapon, which has an increased chance to drop from this chest. The Plasma Coil fires a surge of elemental fury that just disintegrates targets. It's literally the bye-bye beam. Point it, hold that trigger down for a second, and watch it unleash a devastating volley of splash damage rounds. It's going to outdo every gun in the game for damage in that short burst window where it will take down mobs with ease and even some chunky bosses too. It is balanced I suppose by that delay between bursts, but that doesn't stop each one of them from dealing a mountain of damage. It also supports a healthy magazine size allowing you to go entire mobbing runs without reloading. It's best with either a U-Rad or consecutive hits anointment and an Infernal Wish will double its damage, but you can rock anything as it's comfortably packed with more than enough power. Up next it's the Free Radical, a shock only pistol made by Maliwan that belongs to the Director's Cut with an increased chance to drop from Beef Pliskin, you fight around here in Karas Canyon. The Free Radical is a powerful blaster firing sparkling shock orbs that deal heavy splash damage. That damage doesn't stop on impact but continues as that bullet penetrates your target, losing its explosiveness while crashing into them again. That raises its DPS beyond what it normally would be but you never see it because they'll already be dead. A peak damage version will have it hitting harder than the plasma coil but without the burst delay providing automatic damage that is unmatched. It's hard to look past as an all-round weapon, it has everything you want, and a whole lot more. Before number one is uncovered, let's dive into some honourable mentions. First up, it's the Plague Bearer, an elemental launcher manufactured by Torg that has an increased chance to drop from the Warden. You fight around here in the Anvil, but only if you're on Mayhem 6 or higher. The Plague Bearer, like the Backburner, is a top tier launcher and it finds itself incredibly well suited to mobbing. It must be charged before firing, consumes the 3 ammo per shot and fires a similar looking orb, but this one isn't alone. It's circled by a ring of deadly rockets that'll branch off during flight causing monstrous damage to countless nearby enemies. 
That string of rockets is enough to take down the strongest mobs and it will also summon a second wave once the orb lands. On modes you won't find anything that can clear a field as quickly as this and it's a truly amazing launcher that never stops impressing. The next honourable mention I have for you is the Complex Root, a sniper rifle that belongs to the Bounty of Blood and has an increased chance to drop from Lanny Dixon you fight around here in Ashfall Peaks. The Complex Root is deadly not only to your enemies but to you. It fires a flash of zigzagging neon lights that trigger a series of explosions. That projectile pattern and Moses' splash damage skills combine to make a minefield that'll rip through your opponents and often you too. It's often not safe to mob with but combine it with a minesweeper com and you'll delete bosses in a few short fire bursts. Next is the Atlas Replay, a director's cut pistol that will drop most often from Hemivorous the Invincible who you fight in Dark First Dominion, but it can also drop elsewhere in the DLC. The Atlas Replay is a fantastic mobbing pistol that might not seem that way at first. It comes equipped with an advanced tracker system that'll pierce walls, tag your enemies for homing rounds, and boost its fire rate for each person tagged, massively raising its DPS. Moe's can get it going better than any other Vault Hunter and if you want a weapon that'll clear everything on screen without you having to do barely anything, then this is it. Now for the Kybe's Worth, a splash damage SMG that comes in all the elements and can only be dropped by Wotan, the final boss of the Maliwan takedown. The Kybe's Worth fires either two or three arcing projectiles that explode on impact, dealing great damage. It's a purely splash damage SMG that deals its maximum damage all of the time and is enhanced through its multiple pallets. It sits close to the other top tier Mali 1 SMGs but generally feels a lot better to use while dealing the same heavy damage. Another solid gun to wield on modes is the Trevenator, a Mali 1 SMG that comes in all the flavours and has an increased chance to drop from private baked beans. You fight around here in Athena as part of the quest Invasion of Privacy. You may have heard of the T100, well what about the T1 million? That's what you'll be when you're rocking the Trevenator. It fires a number of elemental orbs in a burst pattern that explode on impact and although it's made by Maliwan, there's no charge time here. You can get it in both times 3 or times 6 variants with each of them hitting hard but I prefer the times 3. If you're looking for a shotgun to run on Moe's then you can't get much better than this. And of course we can't forget about the Dark Army which you can obtain from Arms Race with an increased chance to drop from this chest. While equipped, three drones will hover around you targeting enemies and won't go away even if you're driving your mech which makes it perfect for when you're in the bear. Other great weapons to run on Moe's include the Kick Charger, the Beacon, one of my favourites is the Gargoyle, you can't go past the Prompt Critical. The craps is insane with the infernal wish and if you're looking for base game weapons don't forget about the DNA or the boom sickle. You could even run the hornet and of course the bossing beast that is the red light. There's still a few more out there but I don't want to overwhelm you and I'll leave it at that. We have arrived at the top spot and the number one weapon to run on Moe's is the Lucky 7, a Jacob's pistol that belongs to the handsome jackpot DLC with an increased chance to drop from Scrap Trap Prime around here in the compactor. The Lucky 7 is a gun with a huge damage ceiling, you'll only reach it when you reload and are granted all of its damage bonuses. That'll consist of always ricocheting critical amp shots, fully automatic, splash damage, an elemental type, and 7 pellets. On modes, all you need to have a great time is those 7 pellets and explosive rounds, which will have you regening your ammo as you deal 7 times its base damage. It's just insane the amount of carnage this thing can cause, combining it with their Minesweeper Com results in some unreal damage when landing criticals, but you'll deal great damage wherever you fire. The great thing about this gun and Moe's is whenever you get the rolls you want you'll never lose them. You can surf that wave forever and it's definitely a weapon every true Moe's main should have. So that's all for this video, I hope you enjoyed it and learned of the top 10 legendary weapons for Moe's the Gunner. If you did consider dropping a like or subscribing and I'll catch you in the next one.